let's assume we've got the reference triangle. So that's the triangle whose corners are the origin and then one up each axis. And we're going to make the linear Lagrange space on there. So the linear Lagrange space is all of the um, functions which have the form a plus bx plus cy on this triangle. So that is p. That defines the polynomial space that we've got. And it's a three-dimensional polynomial space because in order to define a function in there, you have to define a, b, and c. And therefore, we're going to need three nodes. So one of the things about dual spaces is that the dual space has the same dimensionality as the primal space. So the primal space is a three-dimensional vector space. The dual space is a three-dimensional vector space. And we're going to use the simplest possible node, which is point evaluation. So the, a point evaluation node is a function which takes in a function as an argument, and the number it gives back is that function evaluated at a particular predetermined point. And the point that you use is what de defines that node. So a point evaluation node is defined by the point at which it evaluates the incoming function. And so in this case, we're going to use three vertices of the triangles as the points. Uh, when you get onto continuity, you'll, you'll understand there's a very, very good reason why it has to be those particular points. But for current purposes, we will just arbitrarily say that the points we're going to use are the three vertices of the triangle. So my first node, node zero, so I'm a Python programmer, I count from zero. Uh, node zero is the function evaluated at the origin. Node one is the function evaluated at the point one zero, and node two is the function evaluated at the other vertex, which is zero one. And now we can just use these nodes and this definition of the function space in order to get uh, the definition of what the basis functions are. And the way you do that is for each basis function in turn, so each one of these guys, so each basis function is going to be defined by a value of A, a value of B, and a value of C. We apply each of the nodes to it. So when I apply node zero to one of these, so node zero um, is the um, uh, basis function evaluated at zero, zero. So I substitute X is zero in and Y is zero. So I just get A. So that looks like the row one, zero, zero. And then the next one is evaluated at the point one, zero. So I get one, one, zero. And the next point is evaluated at one, zero, one. So I get this guy. And when I've done that, I have a system which is conveniently square. So now you understand why the nodal space has to be the same size as the primal space because the number of columns is given by the size of the primal space and the number of rows is given by the number of nodes I have. So this is a square system. Uh, because I'm not point evaluating at the same point, it's not singular. And I can invert it. And when I invert it, I discover that the solution is that the first basis function is 1 minus x minus y. And then I repeat the process for the second basis function and I get the second basis function is x. And I repeat the process for the third basis function, and I discover that the third basis function is y. So really what I do to discover the basis is I solve three problems like this. So really what I've done is actually stack three of these guys up here next to each other and invert uh, onto that. And that's the basis of doing this problem. So what do we need to do in order to do this? Well, we need to define nodes. And as we just said, for point evaluation nodes, which are the only ones we'll need in this uh, module, then nodes just means defining the right set of points. And we need to do this process. And so this process comp comprises of building this matrix and inverting it. Simples. So how are we going to deal with the nodes? So as I said, the easiest type of node is a function evaluation at a particular point. There are four real finite elements that are used in interesting contexts where the nodes are not point evaluation. The nodes are things like the integral of the function over the cell or the integral of the function on one of the edges or something like that. And so other cases exist. Um, they are, for these practical purposes, the same thing because a node is just something we can evaluate onto a basis function. And that works the same way 
And in fact, you can represent all of them as sums of points at values uh, due to the Reese representation theorem. We're not going to go down that particular hole. So um, we'll do point evaluation nodes, but what you're learning applies equally to all the other cases. 